Hi, and uh, welcome to this video. My name is uh, Francesco Montecchio, and I'm going to show you how to use the Explore web tool in order to simulate your separation case. We can start from the home page of your internet browser, and we can go up into the address bar and type explore.alphalaval.com. So explore, like the name of the simulation tool, dot the name of our, our company. We then press enter and we reach the first page of our portal where we have three different options. The first, get started, refers to the simulation tool that we are going to use right now. The other two refers to the lab spin tests and the pilot tests. So we want to start a new simulation and then we click here on explore now. We now reach the first page of our uh, simulation tool where we need to specify what type of separation we are going to perform. Are we going to simulate the separation of solids from a liquid phase or a liquid-liquid uh, separation, or we are going to remove both liquid and solids from one liquid phase? For the sake of this example, we are going to choose liquid-liquid separation. More in detail, we are going to simulate the separation of 5% of water in an oil stream of 10 cubic meters per hour. So after clicking on next, we reach the second page of our simulation tool where we need to specify all the process data. We start here from setting the performance. So in our case, what is the maximum allowed concentration of, of water in the outlet oil stream? And um, for example, we can uh, specify something like 0. 1% of water. We can also specify other performance aspects, such as, for example, remove uh, traces of solids. These are not uh, mandatory, but uh, we would like to receive as much information as possible in order to handle your case in the best possible way. We then continue below here by specifying the properties of the primary liquid. In this case, uh, the primary liquid is the oil as it is the product that we are going to refine. Uh, we are going to write down here the total flow rate. And as we said, 10 cubic meters per hour of our oil, we write down, of course, the product name. Then we can set a temperature which can be 30 degrees, for example, and a process pressure just above atmospheric. Then we enter the values of density, 900, and viscosity of 50 centistokes. If you also have the values of temperatures at which these parameters of densities and viscosities were measured, you could enter them here, for example, 20 degrees. As you know, density and viscosity changes over temperature, so it's good for us to have also the information at which temperature these values were recorded. If this feed is known to be corrosive, you can tick this box so we can take some safety precautions when designing your system. We then continue below here by specifying the properties of the secondary liquid. In this case, we said that we are going to remove water. So water is the secondary liquid, the one we need to remove. The concentration, we said 5% of our water, density 1000 kilox per cubic meter, measured at 20 degrees. Now we reach the most tricky part of the simulation tool because we need to enter the droplet size and the sigma distribution. The droplet size refers to the average uh, size of the droplets that uh, we want to remove. So we can write, for example, 40 microns. And the sigma distribution, we can enter a value of 0.8. This distribution refers to how broad the droplet size di distribution is. So a higher number it means that uh, our droplet size dis distribution is very broad and vice versa. Um, smaller numbers means that uh, the droplet size distribution is narrow. Quite often, we have values between 0.8 and 1 in the industries we normally work with. That's why I put uh, point he, point 0.8 here. If you don't know this data, 
uh, it is common it happens not uh, uh, all the times we can get this data because uh, the process changes over time or because simply you don't know uh, exact values about your process we still however ask you to write down the best guess you have at the moment and we can always change it over time but we still would like to have a starting point for our simulation so we can start the calculation if you have some uncertainties or doubts you can always hover the mouse here on the question mark because we write down some uh, instructions and some uh, tips now we can uh, scroll down and look at the results in the form of those two graphs the first one is the performance graph which uh, presents the outlet concentration of the byproduct so in this case water in the uh, primary liquid in this case oil so it's answering the question how much water do we have in the outlet oil stream if you remember we wanted to have a maximum of 0.1 percent of water and this graph is telling us that this performance is met at 15 cubic meters per hour so if we take one of our separators and um, we run any flow rate up to 15 cubic meter per hour we should be able to meet our requirement of course if we lower the flow rate then uh, we need to treat less liquid so our uh, separation performance increases for example we were having in the mind that um, we were treating 10 cubic meters per hour and uh, our simulator is telling us that this performance is met at 0.05%. So basically this means that um, um, we should have an even better quality of our centrate if we lower the flow rate at 10 cubic meters per hour. Next is the degree of separation versus droplet size. And um, this graph is telling us how what is the percentage of um, water droplets separated from the main phase? You see here that every droplet with a size higher than 10.6 micron is completely separated. And then we know that, of course, the smaller the size of the droplets, the more difficult the separation is. So we see that if we move to the left, the percentage of droplets separated decreases. We can uh, always change the parameters of our um, process data. For example, just to give you uh, one example, we know that uh, the higher the viscosity, the more difficult the separation is. So for example, if we have a more viscous oil with a viscosity of 150 centistokes instead of 50, we should have worse results in terms of separation, assuming that we keep the same separator. And if now we enter the value, we can uh, go down and still look at the same performance graph. Uh, if you remember, the um, outlet performance of 0.1% of water in oil was met at first at 15 cubic meters per hour. And now instead it is met at five cubes per hour. So a much lower flow rate because of course, the oil is more viscous, so the separation is more difficult. We can then finalize our simulation by clicking on Next. And uh, then we can write a brief process description such as water removal from oil. And also some installation aspects such as, for example, um, outdoor installation or um, limited space as i told you these are not uh, really mandatory fields but uh, the the more information we have the better it is for us to design your case if the area is hazardous you can tick this box and then specify what explosive standard applies for example atx and uh, where the controls are located is it safe or hazardous area we can then uh, view our summary where all the process data are summarized and uh, you can always have a look at the performance graph. 
if then you want you can save your case and uh, you can always share it and uh, have a look at it later so you click on save you enter your data once you have entered all the, the data you can click on get my personal link so your case is now saved in our database you can now copy it and share it how you prefer i hope this tutorial was interesting for you see you in the next